Good day, everyone. I'm Yeri Shemikailan, and I'm presenting my capstone thesis, Electromechanical Design and Assembly of an Autonomous Unmanned Ground Vehicle. Here you can see the outline of my presentation. We are going to talk about uh, a little bit about the overall introduction to UGBs. Uh, I'll talk about my capstone motivation. Uh, I'll describe a little bit my system, its mechanical, electrical components. Uh, I'll talk about the integration. At the end, we'll have a little demonstration and uh, my future works, my plans. So what are actually unmanned ground vehicles? Uh, they are autonomous or remotely controlled vehicles uh, of various size and of various missions, let's say. Uh, they can uh, be equipped with different sensors or robotic arms or anything and uh, do some predefined tasks they are assigned to. Uh, the region they cover starts from some basic stuffs on Earth up to some great and human driving missions on Mars. As I already said, UGV applications vary a lot. They are used in military, agriculture, cargo and many other spheres. Uh, and probably the most common type of um, UGV is the multi-purpose one. Uh, that's uh, simply said, that's a driving model uh, that with uh, very little differences, adjustments can be used in almost any of the upper mentioned applications. So we are building one such a multi-purpose vehicle for this project. So the motivation was to build a, a complex system uh, mainly for uh, multi-purpose usage and uh, for educational purposes, let's say. The vehicle is going to stay at American University of Armenia so that the students of engineering sciences can use it for different, uh, different subjects such as computer-aided design, manufacturing, control systems, mechatronics, etc. Let's talk about our system. Uh, we have built an, uh, an unmanned ground vehicle that can be controlled uh, manually, all, all, all manually or autonomously. Uh, it, it has the cargo uh, ability to be loaded up to one kilogram uh, and have worked in different uh, spheres like dust, mud uh, and even uh, reached inclines of up to 20%. Let's talk about the details first. Uh, so the first component I want to talk about uh, is the rubber track. The continuous track system, uh, the rubber, was uh, built, manufactured by 3D printer. Uh, it was uh, built from a hyper TPU and it was uh, single piece printed. Uh, there are two main uh, strategies how to create the continuous track, uh, piece by piece or a single chassis or, or a single track, let's say. Uh, I chose the second option uh, because it is easier to manufacture. Uh, at the start of the semester, when we don't have the uh, new 3D printers at the lab, it was a bit of a challenge to print such a long uh, track. Uh, so we, you know, we thought of some alternative methods. However, uh, printing it as a circle was the best option. And I was lucky that we have the, the new 3D printers that allow me to to print it as a circle and have a great result here. Uh, the next component of the continuous track systems are the wheels, the, sh uh, the sprocket. They are again 3D printed from Hyper PLA. Uh, Hyper PLA is a sort of a plastic, but uh, quite robust and strong. Uh, and the, in the interesting part here is the connection between the sprocket and the, the track. It is using the inner teeth of the uh, track to rotate the system. Also, we can observe here some, uh, sprocket, uh, some sprockets and shock absorbers that are used to balance the vehicle. Uh, the next component is the side. As you can see here, the side is, is built from an aluminum using a milling machine at the AUA lab. Uh, first of all, we have 3D printed the, the prototype version of it, again from Hyper, TP, uh, Hyper PLA, and tested the vehicle with the 3D printed body. 
Uh, and the results were uh, quite good, however, a bit different than from an aluminum body. The PLA version of this uh, was bending that resulted in a bit various uh, results for, uh, in comparison to aluminum. Uh, with this aluminum uh, body, I think we have a little bit a loose track, uh, which was not the case of uh, when, when it was built from a PLA. So a little bit of uh, changes could be done there. Uh, the cover of the vehicle uh, consists of two main materials, that's an organic glass and a metal. Uh, and the, the, and the, steels, uh, the steel has the main, um, main purpose of a cover from the outside world. It has two big cuts here, as you can see in the pictures as well. The cuts are used to, uh, to get inside the vehicle if needed, to change the batteries or to turn on anything or to, to turn on some sensors. Also, uh, there is a power supply uh, for the outside components. We have some mounting holes here so that uh, any external device can be uh, can be attached to the vehicle and uh, powered either from the uh, inside controller or from um, the batteries of the vehicle directly. The chassis again is uh, built from steel. It is quite a robust material and uh, adds a lot of structure and robustness to, to the vehicle. Uh, also, it's, it's built from a quite thin one millimeter uh, steel that to not have a lot of weight to the vehicle, to, to have a bit of speed and torque. Uh, the DC motors and the electric speed controller was made probably the, the hardest choice for this system. Uh, we, we need a lot of torque because we are using continuous track that uh, adds a lot of tension. Uh, so we needed a lot of track, we, uh, we needed a lot of torque, that's why and we chose a, uh, a DC motor, brushless, brushless DC motor with a low KV. Low KV means lower speed, but also means uh, higher torque. Also, the ESC was chosen to be able to power that DC motors. We have a quite high 60 ampere uh, e electric speed controller in the system. Two of them and two of the DC motors located at the back of the system. Uh, Con to control the system, uh, we have chose uh, a well-known controller, Pixog. Uh, it is quite used in a lot of ac applications of UAVs uh, in the si in the uh, world. Uh, it mm, there are two two license-free softwares for it, Ardu Pilot, uh, that works for the. Uh, that's a firm firmware. Let's say it controls uh, the. Uh, the skid driving, we are using differential driving here. So Ardu Pilot, Ardu Pilot allows us uh, to use that. Uh, also, there is the Mission Planner software that you can see the screenshot of that is used for user interface. So the user uh, can define a predefined path and attach that mission to the uh, vehicle so that it will follow the path itself. Also, it is used for tuning the motors and ESCs. And overall, you can attach the sensors to the controller and again tune them and control them via the Mission Planner software and Arduino Pilot. Uh, the battery selection uh, came from the selection of the, the DC motors as they required a three cell uh, in series power, so approximately 12 volt in, in voltage. So we, uh, we chose two blocks of uh, 3S2P configurations, uh, two parallel uh, of three series and two in parallel to a bit uh, add of capacity and to give uh, longevity to the vehicle. So overall, uh, to manufacture the final version of the vehicle, 40 hours of manufacturing processes took, uh, which uh, 19 hours took the printing of the uh, rubber tracks, uh, 16 hours took the sprocket and wheels, and some uh, <laughs> four hours and one hours uh, to the aluminum milling and cutting and bending the, the steel cover. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see a demonstration of how the system works. <laughs> 
in real life. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the, the integration of the system, once the assembly was done, uh, all the electrical components and mechanical components were in place. Uh, I used the emission planner software to, uh, to give a life to the system, let's say. And we tuned the vehicle, tested it again, tuned and uh, passed it in a loop of uh, those uh, functions. And once this again was done, it is the time for the demonstration. <laughs> So about the future works, uh, again the vehicle is going to stay at AUA so the future students can, can work on it. Uh, so what can be done? The torque is a little bit less than it should be so increase the torque either by changing the motors or like uh, adding some reducers or anything. Uh, work on the structural integrity of the system so that it is more more resistance to the to the entire world. Uh, we haven't integrated the autopilot mode yet, so the students have the ability to do that. And finally, that's the four point is my my dream to make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> so that's basically it. Thank you. Just uh, so I think the demos you showed, it's mostly manual control, right? Yes. So if, if you are saying that you can also use this for uh, autonomous uh, mode, uh, how are you going to do the localization? Because I, I don't see any any sensors, and also as far as I know, Pixoc does not have very precise localization sensors, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 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 like, w w what ideas do we have how you can make it uh, ready for autonomous control? Uh, the Pixoc come with integrated uh, IMZUs, uh, gyroscopes, etc. Also, we have, at this point, inside we have a GPS module. So we, not precisely, but have the, the location of the vehicle. Uh, with some tunings, better, uh, better sensors, let's say, uh, with the mission planner software. I think that uh, autonomous mode is uh, reachable, let's say. <laughs> okay, but mission planner that you are presenting is is not uh, on the on the robot itself, right? It's it's somewhere yes. on the computer, and you need a kind of a connectivity to control it. Uh, you pl uh, you create a mission in the mission planner, uh, save it in an SD card, and plug it into the vehicle. Okay, but you need much more precise. Localizing sure. capability. Yeah. So, what 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 ideas you have? Like, how how can you make uh, it happen regarding the sensors? Also, computing. Have you researched this area? Like, what what sensors you can use? What computing power you can use for that? To be honest, very little. We were mainly focused on the uh, self-driving mode. Let's see. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, yeah, I would basically extend the grant's question a little more. Um, I have quite good practice with Pixoc. It's quite extendable and it has very uh, flexibilities and, and so on. Um, I understand that you can do with the mission planner, do the planning and then uh, move your uh, vehicle with the, with the tracks and, and so on, but um, actually, 
I don't want to say that this is very close from the out-of-box solution of what the Pixel itself, itself has, uh, but I really would like to see even some, some sensors that would um, even not to guide, but to avoid some like collision detection or like basic basic sensors. I mean, like range detection or collision detection. Or if if you are driving an off road, some sensors that will look down uh, to the ground and avoid dropping from the higher. I mean, yeah, dropping I, I to some place. So. Uh, you know that Pixel has aux channels and it has its own general inputs and outputs and I believe that this would not take much effort to get into that direction as well. Also, if you are talking about the educational part for this mission, maybe that also can guide to a further extensive usage of the Pixel and the sensors usage, you know, and this kind of thing. So, uh, and also I would really like to see those things, even if not in this uh, project, but also as an extension to the next uh, year students. Uh, to be honest, m the main focus was on the mechanical part of the project, so everything was designed from scratch and manufactured, and uh, the electrical part was, let's say, Again, it was the main focus, but a bit lower than the mechanical components. Uh, so we didn't uh, deep very, uh, we didn't dive very deep into the electrical components. However, I believe that uh, for the, for example, control system class, uh, working with the Pixog and adding the autopilot mode is a great project for the students. For the um, for the mechanical part, what is the maximum stress test that you? did for the mechanicals. Uh, so you're mentioning the off-road and the mechanical parts. So did you do some stress test? I know that you could damage your constructions with lots of effort in it. Did you do some? We damaged at, it at, quite at any <laughs> moment. <laughs> <Sometimes. Did you? laughs> yeah, we damaged it a bit. But um, maybe not. We, we haven't done any such stress tests, let's say. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, in your paper, you have stated that uh, most of the parts will be made in house, especially uh, the truck will be 3D printed from rubber. Uh, tell us a little bit about your choice, uh, why you have chosen to 3D print and not buy from uh, a manufacturer and uh, also how long you have driven, uh, for how long you have driven your vehicle, have you assessed how the 3D printed rubber truck performs? Uh, so, initially it was not planned to buy anything, the mechanical part, it was not planned to buy anything, everything is manufactured and designed by me. Uh, so again, the tracks as well. Uh, designing them and 3D printing them adds a bit of flexibility to, to the project. So I can design and manufacture them uh, the way I want and not adapt to the solutions that are in the market. Uh, I cannot say how far we've driven. Maybe uh, I, I, I think we have at least one hour of driving time at this point and the rubber seems not damaged at all. They seem to be very good at this point. Okay. Just a comment to the instruction of the supervisor of the project. Uh, the main focus of the project was to provide uh, like physical uh, body and mechanics uh, to the lab so that in the future uh, the outcomes can experiment on this and it's in the upper platform uh, as a mounting call for the future sensors to be used. So this is essentially uh, an educational version of the robot because we don't have something like this in the lab, it's a UGB. So this is very useful for the lab in the future. And uh, if you want, you can try to touch the, you can show the... Yeah, I can, I can bring it forward. <laughs> Uh, yes, I guess that's uh, 18, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was a mismatch, sorry. Uh, 
Then no, I guess. <laughs> I especially didn't break the <laughs> controller. <laughs> Unless there are any further questions? No? Thank you, Yevishan.